Feeling stressed out and overwhelmed? Today, we've got you covered. Stay tuned. Hi, and welcome to Empowered Kids Team Village Talk. You're here because you know that every family has the potential to be great, and you're willing to push the boundaries of your mindset so that you can create the family of your dreams. Today, we've got a question from Suzanne, and this, I think, is one that we're all feeling. So I'm happy to share it today. Suzanne writes, with everything that's going on, I am completely struggling. There is literally no time for me. I feel like I'm constantly doing something to take care of someone else's needs and I'm exhausted. Do you have any tips for coping while having to do it all? Suzanne, we're all there. This year has been oh, one hat on top of the other hat on top of the other hat that we're all juggling. And to help us tonight, we've got an amazing parenting coach, which is Oriel Camp. Oriel, welcome to Empowered Kids TV. Hi, welcome too. I'm really pleased to, to be here. Oriel, before we dive into answering Suzanne's question, tell us a little bit about your work and where our viewers can learn more about you. Yeah, of course. So I'm a, a life and, and career coach working specifically with uh, parents, like you say, um, helping them to to really be happy and healthy. Um, both, I was going to say at home and at work, but of course, the boundaries have blurred this year. So <laughs> perhaps I need to change that and to say, you know, both, you know, personally and professionally. So, you know, it's to it's to help parents to feel whole, to feel themselves. But at the same time, to really enjoy family life, to enjoy that that parenting role. Um, and I work with people on a one to one basis, whether that be um, coaching, you know, um, less in person, obviously now, but more um, virtually. Um, previously, uh, personal development workshops, and again, we can do those those um, virtually. Um, and I also go into businesses to 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 really support businesses to to look after their people. Um, so not just parents, but their people per se, um, to make sure that they're well looked after, um, they're happy, they're engaged. Um, and a little bit about personality profiling, but I won't go into that, I think, today, because <laughs> that's a completely different ball game. But in a nutshell, it's about understanding what makes us tick and actually uh, where we get our energy from and how we can uh, thrive rather than survive. I love it, Oriel. I absolutely love the fact that you put fun in there because I think a lot of the times we can get so caught up in the day-to-day -day drama of family life and even work life that we forget that it's all meant to be fun. So let's go back to helping Suzanne with her yeah. question. What uh -huh. do you have for helping us deal with that feeling like we're drowning under the to-do list and the overwhelm is just taking over our lives? Yeah, do you know, Suzanne asked such a pertinent question, I think, didn't she, for all of us as, as parents. And, you know, certainly my ears pricked up. It's it's one that I've been asked, you know, many, many a many time. And I'm sure that will that will continue. Um, it'll resonate with with a lot of us. So, you know, like you said, Nicole, we wear so many hats, don't we, on a day to day basis? You know, mum, perhaps we're working, you know, the daughter dynamic, wife, friend, you know, and the list goes on, doesn't it? And, and, we're, and we're continually, continually juggle, juggling and, and doing our very best. But, you know, sometimes we will still experience that that sense of um, that sense of guilt. And it's interesting because Suzanne said she's completely struggling. So, you know, I think that there's a there's an undertone, isn't there? I think you get a sense from the question that actually um there is that sense of overwhelm. You know, I think we've all experienced it where we sort of feel that, that we're going round in circles. Perhaps we're not achieving very much. Um, we're perhaps losing our focus and struggling to, to concentrate. Um, and perhaps we're running on empty. So maybe she's fluctuated in terms of energy, but she said now she's completely exhausted. So I think I'd suggest that she absolutely is running on, on empty, perhaps getting to the end of the day and, and collapsing as opposed to, you know, that, that window of opportunity when the kids are in bed, you know, whatever age they are. Um, and, and of course that gets narrower, that gets smaller as the kids get older, but, you know, perhaps she's, she's having that sort of, that crash out time. Um, but we all know, don't we, that when we have a good day, we're a better mum and we have um, 
a bright disposition, a bright mood, we're positive, and all of that radiates and, and there's a real ripple. So this question I think is 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 perfect and it's 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 great timing, I think, for, for lots of us. Um so the first tip I'd say is the last question she asked was, do you have any tips for coping with doing it all? Don't try and do it all because you're setting yourself up to fail. So I'd just suggest just pressing the pause button and just taking a moment to take stock and to breathe. You, you honestly don't have to do it all. Um, time is a finite resource. You know, we've all got the same hours. We've all got um, the same minutes in a day. Um, we, we, we can teach the kids the time. We can understand time. We can't master or manage time. What we can do is manage our own behaviours and the choices that we make in the way that we that, that we use it. Um, so my suggestion would be really taking stock and being very purposeful about what you're doing with that. So of course we have we have family commitments, like you say, that we do need to fulfil. Um, hopefully willingly and not with resentment. But we also need to think about about fulfilling some of our own needs and wants as well. So I think a question I would pose back to Suzanne would be remembering within all of these commitments, of course, what is it that you want to commit to do for yourself? Because I think that's just really important. So, you know, what's Suzanne's vision? What are her values? You know, what are her aspirations? So what's important to her? What does she want to get out of life? Um, where's she headed? So is she um, making those incremental step changes or actually is she just treading water? Um, I think that's absolutely fundamental here to, um, to her um, being in a better place, um, being in a better place. And, you know, sometimes I think it's, um, it's about being kind to ourselves and, and um, you know, and giving ourselves permission just to um, recognise when good is good enough. I'm sure there's loads of perfectionists out there who really, really give themselves a super hard time and they would not dream of doing that to someone else. Um, so recognising when good is good enough and just moving on um, and prioritising and just, you know, parking up the stuff that can wait. You know, I know we've all had those evenings where, you know, we look at the room and think, oh gosh, don't want to sit in that. It's, a, you know, it's a tip. And it's a judgment call, isn't it, as to whether you, you know, as to whether you work with the kids before bed to do the tidying or whether you actually you just recognise that maybe they're just as tired as you. And, you know, for one night, you can just turn a blind eye to it and let it go. So so I think my first tip, I think quite a long answer, but my first tip would be stop, pause, reflect and just don't do it all. Don't do it all. I love that. I love it because I feel like it gives us permission to bring some ease back into our lives, especially um, throughout 2020, where we've had all these extra obligations just placed upon us. Um, some of them so difficult, like the homeschooling bit, like I was not cut out to be a homeschooling. <laughs> I was just not. So it's it's really difficult, especially for a lot of moms that are trying to do the extra on yeah. top of their on top of their previous workload. It could it could feel like it's never ending. And so I love that you're saying sometimes we just need to take a pause and really reestablish mm. what is actually important in all mm. of these things that are screaming for our attention. Yeah, absolutely. And you use the word screaming there. And it's true, isn't it? There's a lot of noise. You know, there's a lot of noise going on. There's a lot of activity and busyness, you know, on a day to day basis. And like you say, the boundaries are blurring and perhaps the home is a bit messier this year than, you know, perhaps previously. And it's just recognising and appreciating the um, the extra challenges and just letting up a little bit. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so the second thing I think I'd say to Suzanne is, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help. Because I know so many of us are averse to, to reach out and to, to make that connection because perhaps it's seen as a, as a weakness. But I think I would turn that on its head and say, actually, you know, as parents, we are fantastic project managers. You know, we juggle 
we juggle whether that be work or at home, social commitments, budgets, all sorts of activities. We're fantastic at juggling. So a good project manager recognizes the skills and the attributes of the people around them and where other people can help and contribute. So I would certainly encourage Suzanne to ask family and friends and colleagues for help. And I don't know about you, Nicole, but when I've been asked for help in the past, I've actually been quite flattered. It's quite a compliment that someone has thought to ask me, you know, so I think that's really perhaps not the kids. I'm not sure they'll be <laughs> they'll be flattered when you ask them to help, but an adult. You know what though? What I found throughout this this year was that if I explain to my kids how I'm feeling, like I'm feeling really stressed out, it's a lot, and I'm struggling to cope with it all. Uh, and then I ask for help, there's a different willingness. There is less yeah. of it more, really. Yeah, really. Help too. There is a willingness because my kids care. They care about me in the same mm. way I care about them. And because I'm sharing mm. how I'm feeling and that I actually need help. And so I'm not saying I want you to do this simply because I'm asking you to do it, but I need help. Um, and I think what the gift that we got out of this year is that our teamwork has stepped up a notch. Which for me yeah. is great. Yeah, yeah. And it's a different tack, isn't it? It's a different, yeah. it's quite a mature conversation really to have, isn't yes. it? And it's yeah. great when you can get to that place. Certainly it's 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 really positive, isn't it? Like say teamwork, um, whether that be with the family or with with people from work, it's yeah, it's yes. it's the way to go, isn't it? There's an there's an expression, isn't there, that uh, no man is an island and it's so I'm true isn't it? we, you know we work better when we support and we collaborate and you know we yeah. always think it still takes a village it still yeah, takes absolutely. A village. absolutely yeah yeah definitely definitely so yes yeah, so the first one's about being purposeful the second one's about asking for help and I think the third one is about, um, for Suzanne, just being self-aware. So she's obviously, by asking the question, she's demonstrating a degree of self-awareness here in terms of how she's, how she's feeling, sorry, and the perhaps the state that she's in. So I think it's recognizing the signs, which she obviously is doing already, and um, recognizing the signs that she's struggling. Um, thinking about, I suppose, what, what she does that recharges her battery, that replenishes those energy levels. And what the benefits of doing that are. Um, so how is she feeling when she's fully charged and she's she's good to go and she's got her mojo back? Um, and what are the benefits that might be for her personally or there might be a wider benefit to that? And then I suppose the final question would be, how can she integrate that um, that self-care and that awareness into a day-to-day -day life so it doesn't have to become um a big over over arduous task it's just you know it might be that she's just taking um just taking a moment to re to reverse that tide you know to understand when she is when she is under par um so i think self-awareness and being aware just gives us the power i think to take that control back a little bit i love that i think um sometimes we put self-care in a box that makes it grand like i have to go for a massage for an hour yeah. i have to do yeah yeah to uh -huh. and, and sometimes it's just five minutes yeah that absolutely. You need, right? absolutely. Um, so what I did around this, and I love that you're saying, make a list of the things that recharge your battery. So I made a list for myself. And on that list has really silly things, like dance to a favorite song. And yeah. so sometimes in the day, I put my headphones on, I crank the volume up really loud, and I sing to the top of my lungs, and I just have a dance for one song. Um, and that just gives me this whole boost of playful, kind of childlike energy. And I'm yeah. Ready. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it changes your state instantly, doesn't it? It changes your mood. So, and it's and it's knowing, isn't it? It's knowing those things, yes. those little things that just bring you back and ground you and, you know, replenish you. So, like you said, you know, um, self-care doesn't have to be a big a monetary gesture. You know, it, it can be something as small as having a dance and a sing or, 
having a really nice cup of tea and just picking a book up for five or ten minutes you know it might be it might be bigger than that of course it might be taking half a day out to catch up with a friend or go for a walk or do some exercise but each and every day it doesn't have to be that um and I think it's just I think it's just purposefully at the beginning of each day asking yourself so if Suzanne asks herself what's that one little thing I'm going to do for myself today however small then it just sets you up for the day it sets the tone and I think it gets you to a place where um you know you're in you're in the best place to um to look after other people you know you're looking after your whole aren't you because it's you know you talked about the physical side of moving and there's the mental and there's the emotional and perhaps for some people there's the spiritual as well so you know just making sure that we just take all of that into um take all of that into account really um and you know i think working with parents when they come to work with me around self care sometimes they've um express concern that perhaps their their aspirations are selfish or you know the, the the practices the habits that they want to the positive habits that they want to um foster are selfish because it's taking them away from the family but i completely completely challenge that because it is about self-preservation you know the oxygen mask you know and, and looking after yourself so that you can tend to the needs of other people and I think it's a little opposite of selfish. I, I like to think of myself as the teapot. And everybody I serve is a little cup. Now, if I'm empty, I don't have yeah. it. And I think the truth about it is you feel like a, as a mom, especially, like you, well, you do keep going, but it's how yeah. you keep going, right? It's how. Um, when my cup is empty, when my teapot is empty, I show up, I'm irritable, um, kind of antsy, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, 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 quick to anger and frustration so mm. that's a very different mom compared to when i fill my cup then i'm yeah. grateful and i'm loving and i'm more compassionate and so yes you can keep going but it's how and when you recognize that filling you up first means that you mm. get to show up in close to the intention that you have you know you get to show up as the type of mom you want to be then for me there's no greater gift you can give to yourself and to your family than to take care of yourself absolutely i love that it's 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 yeah. completely that isn't it it's for fi it's filling yourself filling yourself up feeling whole looking after yourself and gosh does it impact you know positively on everybody around you family and friends and and you know further afield we, we've all had those days haven't we where with the best of intentions we've just had a bad day and we've been super grumpy you know <laughs> and then we've had those days where you know gosh people can sense the the energy and the positivity and the you know it's it's so yeah it's so tangible isn't it in a very strange way you get really good tangible results from it don't you so yeah yeah and then i think the last i think the last tip i would give to um to Suzanne which we've sort of touched on really is just you know about enjoying the moment you know mm. like we've said being a parent you know it's great fun but it's also super hard work as well and there's lots of um repeated repetitive activity I suppose looking after the home and looking after family and I suppose it's not getting bob bobbed down in in the monotony monotony sorry or the the repetitiveness of that and it's just enjoying those little moments you know some people might look and say, God, I was really, it's just enjoying those little moments and being present for the kids because if you're not there if you're not present and you are absent well you know don't you you know if the kids are talking to you and you, you're not listening you know in your heart that you're not there with them but they pick up on that too and, and you know we all miss out on that don't we so you know it talking about mindfulness you know there's mindfulness at home as well and with family being mindful being aware um and we're great multitaskers super busy like we said lots of juggling but there's also opportunity just to slow things down a bit so you know to, to monotasking i'm not sure if that's something that suzanne would be familiar with but monotasking is where really you um take your foot off the accelerator and just focus on one thing at a time and it can be really simple like for myself for me it's actually just boiling the kettle and making myself a cup of green tea in a cup 
that's that was special it was gifted by a good friend and for me that's just such a perfect moment and a really lovely start to the day and it's super simple but it, it really you know it has a lot of meaning to me so I think it's about being grateful expression, expressing gratitude and, and just enjoying that moment um, and that gratitude can be something that you do on your own, you know, I think there's lots in the media, there's lots of awareness now around the benefits of gratitude. So it might be that you have a little journal or you think at the end of the day, I like to do it as a family, gratitude as a family, as a family, just have a chat about it. Um, so that, I think that, you know, that's it in a nutshell. So just going back to the original question, tips for coping. It might be that in the first instance, she needs to look at coping mechanisms and surviving but really encourage you to go beyond that and to, to get thriving i love it I love, i'm gonna recap for her because you've given us some amazing tips so the first one was don't try to do it all like take a pause take a deep breath take a step back and really identify what's important because don't let all the noise kind of be pulling you in one direction or the other just what's important to you and your family now and kind of focus on that don't be afraid to ask for help and i think this was such a powerful thing because especially i don't know about you but that was something that i had to work on as a woman like i felt like yeah. asking was a sign of weakness um Definitely. And so I had to work at being comfortable to reach out and ask for help. And it could be that sometimes you just need a friend that you can rant to for five mm -hmm. minutes. Just to let it all out. Um, and then you go, all right, it's out. It's out. I'm over. I can pick myself up and go again. Or, or sometimes somebody to just have a laugh with just to kind of change the mood. But be open to asking for help, including asking your kids. I also love that you said um, really dive into being self-aware and to make a list of what it is you need in every moment to be able to recharge yourself when you recognize that, hey, I'm off balance, I'm feeling mm -hmm. stressed, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Um, you also said um, that we really need to try to integrate self-care into the day. Don't make it a big thing that you have to get to. <laughs> no, it's not another thing on the to-do list, but something that we can weave into the little moments, making a cup of tea, having a nice dance, uh, sometimes I even watch a comedy clip, like two minutes. Yeah, that's a great idea, actually. Yeah. I get a little laugh and it changes the energy in my body and then I keep yeah. going. And then the last that you had was find ways to enjoy the moment, add mindfulness and gratitude. And I think this one is so important because in the busyness of life, especially when we feel overwhelmed, we could lose sight of the fact that we're busy going but not really being effective. Mm -hmm. And the things that are important to us. Um, we have a saying in Trinidad, um, you're spinning top in mud, which means like if you think of it, it's a top and <laughs> going right. Away. Right? So you're just busy going, going, but you're really going nowhere. And I think when yeah. I feel overwhelmed, that phrase comes to mind because I feel like, what am I doing? I'm just going. Yeah, that captures it perfectly, actually, it does. doesn't it? it does. So I think adding mindfulness and gratitude is so important because it just helps to slow everything down. Mm -hmm. It soothes you, soothes your entire nervous system, but also gives you the ability to refocus on what's important. So some amazing tips. Mm. is there anything mm. else you'd like to say to uh, Susan? I, I just think the main thing is you know well done for asking the question because you know it takes courage doesn't it to to verbalize to to, to voice um to voice that you know so she, talking about asking for help actually she's taken that first step already which is fantastic yes. and she's already demonstrated a really good degree of self-awareness in terms of where she's at so she's well on track to not only just coping but you know and, and surviving but really going beyond to thriving um so I just wish her all the best you know really empathize and um and hope that's been helpful beautiful Ariel thank you so much for joining us it has been helpful it was even good to be a reminder for my all those amazing tips yeah, well, that's the thing. it's a it's a conversation for us all isn't it yes so perfect all right thank you for joining us for this episode 
We're all about sharing and support in this village. So if you found value in this episode, be sure to share it with your family and friends. And remember, this is a weekly show. So if you haven't already, subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you'll be notified of our next episode. As we always say in the village, you're just one connection away. With love and gratitude empower us. Until next time.